Welcome to Excel 2010 Business Math video number 67. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel 2010 Business Math Chapter 8, click on the link below the video. Now I'm going to click on the topic sheet. This is Chapter 8. We're going to cover sections 8.1 and 8.2. Uh, both of these will talk about markup. In this video, we just want to talk about the basic markup formula, and then later we'll talk about markup on cost, markup on selling price, and a few other topics. I'm going to go over to the sheet, dollar sign markup formula. Now, what is markup? Let's just look at an example here. Cost. All right, so you bought an item for 10 bucks, or you made an item for 10 bucks. You add $5 to it, and you get your selling price. This is called the basic markup formula. So if I'm going to add these two, and by the way, it's always Later, we'll talk about markup on cost and markup on sell price percentages. But the dollar amounts for markup are always going to be the same. Cost plus markup equals selling price. Doesn't matter if you're a manufacturer making the item and adding something to it and then selling it to some other business, or you're the final retail business selling it, you have a cost. You add your markup, and then you have your selling price, right? So if I was going to add these, I would Alt equals. That's the keyboard shortcut for the auto sum. So this is the basic markup formula. Now, markup. Here's another diagram. So you have your cost. Whatever you mark up. So if the, the item costs $10, and you mark it up 5 and you sell for the month you know, 5,000 of these, the total markup better cover all of the expenses for the business and whatever profit you want. Now, in this chapter, we basically just talk about the individual items and their markup. But this is a concept, right? You have all the costs for the goods you bought to then sell. Obviously, you have things like wage, rent. So whatever your markup, it better cover that and whatever profit you want. If it doesn't cover all that, like it only covers some of your operating expenses, then you have a loss. All right, so our basic markup formula, cost plus markup equals sell price. Now, during this chapter, I think we have four or five videos, we'll be doing lots of this, cost, markup, sell price. But sometimes you're going to be given cost and markup like this, and we'll add it. Other times, they're going to give you the sell price and the cost, and you need to figure out the markup. Well, no problem. This plus this equals that. So if I want to figure out how much to add to the cost, given the sell price, I simply say, hey, give me the sell price minus the cost. Similarly, if I know the markup and the sell price, well, if I take the sell price and subtract the markup, I'm going to get the cost. So I'm going to take the sell price minus the markup. And these three variations we'll use. Um, throughout the rest of the videos. But it's always based on this same cost plus markup equals sell price. All right, now I'm going to go over to the sheet markup on cost and just give you a basic little preview before we jump into the heart of uh, markup on cost. Here's Gel Boomerangs, a the manufacturer. They make a boomerang that costs $8. If they add a markup of $6, the sole price that they charge their customer would be 8 plus 6 equals 14. So here it is. This is a, a manufacturer's point of view. This is cost, and we're always going to have the same formula. Cost plus markup equals sell price. C plus M equals S. So cost plus the markup, and this is what the manufacturer is going to charge the retail store. So I'm going to add these up. Alt equals, it's adding those two cells, enter. Now, manufacturers always want to know the percent markup on cost, and the sell price is a percentage of cost. So we're going to do some percentages here. But see, this is the manufacturer. So manufacturer sees everything in terms of how much did it cost them to make this product. So it cost for this particular boomerang $8. Now, that means if we compare 6 to 8, meaning we're going to say 6 divided by 8, and then we're going to take the sell price and say sell price divided by 8. In both cases, the base or the denominator is cost. All right, so here's these two formulas. Not only that, but what is the base cost as a percent? Well, if we came over here and says, hey, I want to compare 8 
that's the cost, divided by and compare it to the cost. What's well, anything divided by anything? 1, or if I format it, home ribbon, uh, home ribbon, number group, drop down, percentage, of course, 1 is 100%. We've done that lots of times in this class already. All right, so now let's go ahead and do it. But just here's the cool thing. We're going to get into some complicated calculations uh, in the next couple of videos. But if you're talking about base um, markup on cost, the base is always going to be cost, and it, the percentage is always going to be 100%. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. I want to compare the markup to the cost. Equals, hey, whatever the markup is divided by the cost. And that's what wholesalers do. I used to run a manufacturing company, and that's what we did. We compared everything to the cost. So we had a 75% markup. What does, that, <clears throat> what does that mean? Just as we saw back in Chapter 3, if I know that the markup on cost is 75, if I wanted to figure out what the markup was, what would I do? Well, here's the base. Here's the markup. It means I want to add 75% of this $8 on top of it to get to my sell price. So no problem. Over here, I go round. And just like we did in Chapter 3, I say the base times the percentage, in our case, markup on cost, comma 2, because this is a dollar. Right? And so that, if I format it as a dollar, that will be remind us that back in Chapter 3, if we wanted to figure out the part, we said base times rate. Now, OK, so that's what that means. That's 75%, and that's how manufacturers like to think. I'm going to take 75% of this 8, get $6, add that $6 to the 8, and get the sell price. Ah, but now manu um, manufacturers, they also want a percentage for their sell price. Sell price is a percentage of cost, so you say equals. Oh, the final sell price compared to the cost. 175, yeah, that means that's the percentage you multiply times cost to get your sell price. So if you wanted to get your sell price, you simply would say equals round. Oh, yeah, the base. Manufacturers always like cost as the base, so the cost times the sell price as a percentage of cost. And that uh, either 8 times 100, 175% will give us our $14. Now I'm going to comma 2. And guess what? That also is part equals base times rate. It's just a different rate, right? We have two rates. Now I want to go and look, and I'm going to scroll a few sheets ahead to mark up on sell price. And now we're going to switch gears. Kite Flight retail store buys a boomerang that costs them $14. If they add a markup of $11, the sell price that they charge their customer would be 14 plus 11 is 25. Okay, so it costs the retailer 14 bucks, right? They bought it from Gel Boomerangs, the manufacturer. But now, the this is the retailer. Notice the dollar formula for car, cost, markup, and sell price is exactly the same. We're always, you start whether you're the manufacturer or the retailer in this case. You have some cost, you add some markup, and you get the sell price. All right, so what do we do here? Alt equals. And so the retailer, they bought it 14, they added $11 markup, and they get to 25. But here's the deal. A retailer wants to know percentage markup on sell price and cost as a percentage of sell price. So what does that mean? The sell price for retailers is always going to be the base, right? Because the retailer wants to compare everything to sell price. So let's go ahead and look down here. Oh, we have a different base. But if we have any base in the universe, what is the rate associated with that base? 100%. Because look here, if we said, oh, yeah, yeah, sell price, and I want to compare it to sell price, anything divided by anything is what? 1. And when we format it, home, number group, percentage, we get 100%. But here's the deal. Just a moment ago, we did base 
was sell price uh, was cost right but that was a different base that would be up here so if you go back over here it was just a completely different base why because this is the manufacturer but now that we're the retailer we have a different base so that means the retailer compares the cost to the sell price and the markup to the sell price so when they go to calculate cost as a percentage of sell price right and here's our formulas you say equals cost divided by our sell price. And we're not going to round the percentages. We, we round the dollar amounts, but not these percentages. All right, so 56%. That means that the cost was 56% of the sell price. All right, and so now let's do markup. Dollar amount compared to the sell price dollar amount. So equals markup. 44%. That means the markup compared to the sell price is 44%. Now let's do the same check we did for markup on cost for this markup on sell price. I bet you if we take 56% times that, we're going to get the cost. And 44% times the $25 sell price, we're going to get the markup. So it's, it's again, it's similar to what we did in Chapter 2. I even put a little, uh, this is the same thing. Here we're calculating a part. That's going to equal base times rate. And we're going to do it two times. Two different, we're calculating two different parts with two different rates. Equals round. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We'll, we'll write cost and markup so we have our labels. So this will be cost. We'll do our formula. Equals round. All right, so the base is always going to be for markup on sell price 25 bucks times our 56 percent comma two okay so we got 14 just like double checking and seeing how this works that railroad track means I need to change the column width there and I'll do round all right so we got our base times our 44 percent and that better give us exactly our markup Control Shift 4. Now, uh, one last point I want to, and I see that this is off the screen here. Let's see if I can bring this down here and not get a. Maybe right here. All right, so what we did here is we compared both the, the cost and the markup to sell price. We got 56 and 44. For retailers, this is how they see this, and this is why. The retailer compares everything to sell price. When $1 comes into the cash register, when I see cost as a percentage of sell price is 56%, that means every single $1 that comes into the cash register, 56 cents of that went to cost. The remaining 44% went to markup. And of course, markup covers all of your expenses and your profit. So that's why the retailer likes sell price as the base. Let's go over and look at markup on cost sheet. The This is from the point of view of the manufacturer, right? Manufacturer. We're making boomerangs here. It costs us $8 to make the boomerang. Manufacturers like to have cost as the base because for every $1 of cost, they want to see, remember we have a percentage of 75% and a percentage of 175% for the sell price. This is markup. This is sell price. Wholesalers see that $1 of cost, and they immediately say, oh, I add 75 cents to get a sell price of $1. So for every $1 of cost, mark up 75%. That yields $1.75 in sell price. So different points of view lead manufacturers to use a different base. They use cost. I come back over here to this sheet. Whereas different points of view, whoops, the retailer uses the sell price. OK, so in this first video for Chapter 8, we saw back here, we saw the basic markup formula, right? Cost dollars plus markup dollars equals sell price. And then we saw had a little introduction to markup on cost. And we had a little introduction to markup on sell price. In our next video, we'll go into much more detail for markup on cost. See you next video.